Hey peeps, I'm back. It is September 10th, 2021, Friday. I've taken a two month hiatus. Well, hiatus is, I guess that's a little much. Okay, I've, I've taken a two month lazy spell. Two months of picking my nose and sitting on my ass. If you can consider that a, a hiatus. No, I've just been busy. You know, I have things going on like anybody does. I have a semblance of a life, I like to think. And sometimes the YouTube videos just don't don't take precedent. But I've had some time this week to do some. I plan on plan on doing a few this weekend. So I hope hope people tune in. Oh, that reminds me too. I I wanted to take a minute to just thank people for watching my videos. I, again, I've I've stated in past videos. I don't ever assume that anyone's going to watch these videos. These are just videos I kind of scrape together. I pull records out and feel like talking about them because I'm passionate about them and I know them really well and I like them. But I don't ever anticipate anybody actually watching these, much less commenting on them and giving me a thumbs up and being a subscriber. And it's just not something I ever expect. So the, the fact that I have, I don't know, I, I think I have 70 or 80 subscribers now and I get ton of, a ton of really nice compliments and comments from people and just like a dis nice discussions about the records and the music I'm talking about. So I, I really wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you to you guys for watching. I, I really, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't do these videos anymore if I felt like people weren't enjoying them. Um, and also the other cool thing is you know, people all over the world watch these. So, you know, I'm on the West coast of the United States, you know, so to, to go halfway across the world and have somebody comment from, you know, Sweden or whatever the country is, France. There's a there's a a French guy. I forget your name, your YouTube name, but he was he was nice enough to leave some comments and ask me when I was going to do another video. I, I forget his name, but he also talks about music and records. He's a really nice guy. So yeah, to be reached out to from you know different countries halfway across the world or even right here in the United States, it's really it's a really cool thing, and I wanted to send a heartfelt thank you to everybody. I really appreciate it. And people have really responded well to the Skinny Puppy videos. I I didn't see it coming. Frankly, I thought my Happy Mondays video would be more popular or the Brian Eno one or, you know, in my mind, those are the ones will be really popular, but the Skinny Puppy ones have taken hold. So uh, you Skinny Puppy fans out there, thanks a lot. I really appreciate your comments. And what's not to love about Skinny Puppy, man? I don't know. I just, there are, there are more skinny puppy fans out there than I thought. So along that line, I'm going to talk about another band that I like even more than skinny puppy. And it's a very, it's, you know, it's a very short window in terms of when I liked this band. In my opinion, they really haven't put out a decent album in 25 years, but during the eighties and early nineties, this band, could not be stopped. And it's really one of my all time favorite bands. Truly love this group. The guy who run, who, the guy who runs the group is one of my all time heroes. Uh, he was way ahead of his time. He still is, he's just on a different planet. He's a just a renegade and a psycho and a, a genius and brilliant and a complete fuck up. All these things rolled into one. And that's Al Jorgensen. And those of you watching this video know who he is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time digging into his biography. You can go to Wikipedia or wherever and look that up. But Al Jorgensen means a lot to me. And I plan on doing a video for all of his albums throughout the 80s and early 90s because they all mean something significant to me. And as a kid growing up in the 80s, I really, really loved Al Jorgensen. Back in the 80s, Al Jorgensen was... A name that people celebrated. He anything he did, you picked up. It wasn't just me either. Like there was like a cult of Al. It's still out there to some degree, but unless you were in the 80s, it's kind of hard to it's hard to describe because he still has his cult, but I feel like there are people like myself who were there in the 80s following him. It's easy also to go back and listen to his records in the 80s and be like, yeah, he, you know. His his music is good, but it sounds dated. But you, you can't. You've got to put yourself in that 
in that mindset of when the album and the songs came out. If you were there back in the 80s listening to his music, it was like from an, it was another planet. This music didn't exist. Al created a whole new persona, a whole new genre all by himself. And I will prove that hopefully through my videos. So I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So anyway, I'm going to back up in this video. I'm going to talk about his very early releases and his first album. And it's, it's interesting how his first album was marketed and how it was released. It has a couple of different, slightly different versions, um, a couple of singles I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to focus on early Al Jorgensen. Essentially from 1981 to 1982, three Al Jorgensen. He has very distinct phases. He has his early phase, then his mid phase, then his third phase, and then pretty much the phase he's in now that he's been in for the last 25 years. I'm not such a fan of. Um, it's just my opinion, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I love heavy metal. I do love metal music, but I don't necessarily love what he's done recently, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about early 80s Al Jorgensen, okay? Wax Tracks, early Wax Tracks Al Jorgensen. Synth Pop Al Jorgensen. Al Jorgensen looks back at this phase or his first album as the abortion. He always calls it the abortion. He's a little harsh on himself. I, I think, you know, under those... Under the circumstances he was under when he made that first album, I think he has good reason to be bitter. And I'll talk about that a little bit here. Back in the early 80s, um, well, his first release, I'll just talk about this. Al's first release was this. Ministry, I'm Falling, with Cold Life also on this record. Now, this is the first pressing on Wax Tracks Records. Um, you'll notice, well, you'll just notice it's got a very distinct look. There's the back. This came out in the early 80s, um, 1981 to be exact. Um, I think, did this come out in 82? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it came out in 81. Let me see if there's a year on this. Um, hmm. You'd think I'd know that. I'm doing a video and I don't even know. I think it was 81, though. No later than 82. Um, this was his very first record, very first release, and this was his very first... This is the way the first issue cover looked. Because it also got released a year later with this cover. It's got the exact same track listing on it. On it. I'm Falling, Cold Life, and Primental. Prime Mental is basically an instrumental version of I Wanted to Tell Her, which is a song that's on with Sympathy, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But this was the re-release of I'm Falling slash Cold Life. Cold Life was the big hit on here, but I'm Falling was actually the A-side. I think it was a double A-side, so a lot, of, a lot of bands did that back then. There was no B-side. They just put a bunch of solid tracks on a record, and there was an A-side and a double A-side. One of the best A-side, double A-side records you'll ever hear in your life is Meat Beat Manifestos, Radio Babylon, Helter Skelter. But that's for another video. We're talking about ministry today. And this cover is kind of cool. It came with this flap cover. It's got a little flap that you stick in, stick in the bottom there, and the record's hidden away. But anyway, kind of a cool cover. Same record, just re-released. Uh, I think, you know, Cold Life was so popular back in the day that they had to re-release it. But if you ever see this, pick this up. I, I've never seen another copy of this, and I don't even remember, you know, you know, I bought this back in the late 80s. I remember having this in high school, so I bought it somewhere. I don't remember where. I think I probably bought it used. So coming across this is not easy. But great... It's a great single. Cold Life is the reason to pick this up. Cold Life has just got that early 80s kind of, you know, it's, it's synth pop, but it's also got this funk jam vibe to it. Great bass line. It sounds like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers is banging on the, on the bass somehow, but it's um, just a really unique song. You can see why people loved it so much back then. It was disco, but funk, little punk, 
all this shit mixed in there. And that's what Al did. That was so great. Al Jorgensen, the great producer, he created something entirely new here. And Al was part of Wax Tracks. Both of these records are on Wax Tracks, which was based out of Chicago. And, you know, as far as I know, I think Al, I think Al worked at Wax. Yeah, he did. Those of you who haven't seen uh, The Industrial Accident, the Wax Tracks story, it's a documentary. It's really excellent. I was surprised how good it was. Most documentaries are just shit, in my opinion, 90% of them. It was really good. I was very impressed. Um, it, was made by, it was made by the daughter of one of the past owners of Wax Tracks. So she's got all this unique footage and she knows all the bands. So really, really good. Anyway, watch that if you want to have some more background on Al Jorgensen. But again, I'm not going to cover Al much in this video because I think people who are here already know more about Al than most people. But anyway, Al worked at Wax Tracks Records back in the early 80s, and he he put this out. They put this was the first big hit, one of the first records on Wax Tracks, if not the first. I think I think maybe the Divine single was number or no, it was um, oh god, it was the, that punk band. I can't remember the name of them. They released a five track EP, Strike Under. I knew it would come to me. I think Strike Under was the first. Divine was the second. Cold Life, third. Anyway, a great starting point for Al right here. Um, those of you who are around in the 90s who remember this magazine called Jockey Slut, their logo was Disco Pogo for Punks and Pumps. That's a great way to explain Cold Life. Disco Pogo for punks and pumps. It's just got that vibe to it. It's disco, it's punk, it's funk, it's dance, it's house. It's, it's just every cool genre you can think of all mashed into one. A great start for Uncle Al Jorgensen. And this is the last pressing out. They, they pressed it up yet again. When did this come out? 1985. So this came out a couple years later with yet another cover. And the Cold Life dub. Those of you who don't know what a dub is, dub just means instrumental. I've explained that in a past video, so I won't ramble about it too much longer in this video. But yeah, basically it has the instrumental for Cold Life, and then it has I'm Falling and Primental as well. This might have the Wax Tracks catalog in it. Yeah. This is another thing that Wax Tracks did. They put a catalog in all of their records. Anyway, um... The third cover for Cold Life. Deserved it. It was a great song. Great single. So, after that, after Al put out Cold Life, he signed an album deal with Arista Records. And they, to Al's telling, they forced him into a, into a corner and kind of made him make this pop record. And he's never been happy with it. He calls the album The Abortion which I think is being a little harsh, but that album is this, with Sympathy. And this is a really good record. Now, Al can hate this all he wants. And as someone who loves synth pop, as, as well as heavy metal and disco and techno and rock, and I, I love it all, jazz, I, I love music. I would easily rank this, if I had to do a top 20 synth pop albums of the 80s, this would be in that list. This is a really good record. Again, Al can hate this all he wants, and I'm sure he has nothing but negative memories and connotations to this album, but there's a lot to love about this record. If you, if you listen to it as a testament to early synth pop with some punk vibes thrown in, you can't get much better than this. Now, Al's embarrassed by this because, you know, it's New Wave and the lyrics are all lovey-dovey. This is the one record that Ministry ever did that has, like, lovey-dovey, goofy lyrics. And quite frankly, the lyrics are shit. Especially, but it, it makes it more fun to listen to because it's Al. Listening to him sing about love is just funny. Um, and also, this was his look then. I think Al's probably embarrassed by this. This is the inner sleeve. Um, you know, he's Mr. New Wave here. And I've got some other photos of him in this in this era. This is, uh, those of you who don't know, this is Al right here. 
looking all moody and pensive with his uh, his new wavery. I think this was the drummer. Anyway, this is the inner sleeve. But this is an excellent, excellent testament of early 80s new wave. It's really good. The, the tracks are well written. It's well produced. You know, you can tell that Al, something that we learned about Al as the years went on is he took a lot of seriousness with his releases. He never, he never released a product that was bad. Even though he didn't enjoy this experience, this is still a very tightly produced and well-written album. I mean, Al had an a uncanny knack to write hits. As much as he maybe didn't even want to, he's a hit maker, man. I mean, the songs on here, Effigy, Revenge, the entire first side were basically singles. You flip it over, there's songs like She's Got a Cause, which is a great song. That should have been a single as well. There are a couple of goofy songs on here, like Here We Go and What He Say. and There are some goofy songs on here, but for, for the most part, six of the nine songs on here are really solid work. And again, Al didn't enjoy making this. He, I guess he was pressured by the record company to make a lovey-dovey new wave album to fit in with the human leagues and wall of voodoos of the world. But um, he, you know, this is what he did. Maybe not wall of voodoo. That's not fair. Wall of voodoo wasn't such a lovey-dovey thing. But human league, ABC, that kind of shit. I think they're just trying to lump him into a genre that he wasn't comfortable in, as we would later learn from his later albums. But that's for another video. Anyway... With Sympathy, his first album, excellent new wave, excellent electronic pop. Check this out if you like, you know, just check it out if you like music. But if I had to compare this to anything, you know, to me in my head, this, the best synth pop bands of the 80s were Depeche Mode, um, uh, you know, New Order, obviously, um, Fad Gadget, OMD. You know, I would put this album with any of their albums from, from that area. I mean, not every Depeche Mode album. Depeche Mode's, you know, they're on top of their own mountain. But if you like synth pop and you like that kind of vibe, maybe I would most directly compare this to maybe Fad Gadget. Those of you who know Frank Tovey, Fad Gadget, if you don't, check him out as well. But yeah, if I had to make it, the most direct comparison maybe would be Fad Gadget. Just a very raw, direct but well-produced electronic synth pop punk thing with sympathy. Now I show this just as a curiosity. This is the German press of with sympathy. And it's got a different title as well. It's called work for love, which is one of the singles I'll get to here, but they retitled the album work for love in Germany, different cover, different title. And they also rearrange the track listing. I don't know if this is interesting to anyone, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, show it anyway. Now here, most of the world got this track listing in this order. You see, effigy, revenge. I wanted to tell her, work for love. But then you come to the European one, and you've got work for love as the first track. The second track is called Do the Atawa, which actually is what he say on With Sympathy. Um, why they changed the name, I don't know. What he say, Do the Atawa. Um, I thought that might have been like a... Um, I, I thought that might have been like an anagram or something, but it's not. I was looking at it, I'm like, maybe they rearranged the letters or something, but it's not. It's just Do the Atawa. I don't know. There you go. And yeah, they rearrange it. Do the Atawa, I wanted to tell her, say you're sorry. Then you go to the B-sides, here we go. Then Effigy, then Revenge. Then She's Got a Cause, then Should Have Known Better. So they rearranged the songs, retitled one of them. I think the best part is the photo. Of, I look at Al right here. I mean, could he look more fruity in this picture? If I ever met Al Jorgensen and I had him sign any record, I would insist that he sign this. I would just want him to see it, and then I'd want to see his face seeing it. Um, 
those of you who know Al now know that this picture is fucking ridiculous and hilarious. Anyway, the German copy of this. It's basically with sympathy, just a different title and different cover. There it is. Uh, this is one of the singles that came from it. This is the UK edition of this, I Wanted to Tell Her. It has two remixes of I Wanted to Tell Her. And then a B-side called Walk in the Park. You can see Al with his fingernail polish on, looking all moody. Walk in the Park is pretty cool. It's just an instrumental electronic jam with, you know, a woman whispering the same sentence over and over. It's okay. Um, you know, if you, if you like Work for Love, you kind of have to have this single. Um, this is another one, Work for Love. This is the U.S. edition. Um, basically has the album version of Work for Love and then a couple of remixes. This is one of my least favorite songs on the album, actually. In fact, I think Work for Love is arguably the weakest song on the album, but that's how it goes usually, you know? You know, the record company typically picks the lamest, softest, most pop-tastic tune to promote and release as a single. That way it connects with the most amount of people. It's not a bad song, it's just not the song I would have chosen as a single. Uh, Revenge got released as a single, too but no remixes. I have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. When I was compiling my ministry records, I, I couldn't find it, sorry. It's just a plain black promo cover anyway. It's uh, Revenge and Effigy on side one, and then two remixes of I Wanted to Tell Her, both of which are featured here. So if you don't have that single, but you have this and you have the album, that single doesn't have any tracks you don't have. So this is a great album. I would highly recommend picking this up. Al can be as embarrassed as he wants by With Sympathy. As a testament of early 80s synth pop, it is an excellent listen. Uh, I, would, I would encourage any ministry fan to, to reopen their arms to this. I know a lot of current ministry fans probably don't want to even listen to this because it's not so far removed from heavy metal. But the thing about Al is, it's like he was always about the energy, you know? That's what I loved about Al. His, his music was always intense. Regardless of the lyrical intent, his music has always been kind of aggressive. You can hear that on With Sympathy as well. But the guy just has a real knack for writing good tunes. You just can't take that out of the artist. And Al Jorgensen is a great artist when it comes to writing really catchy songs. And With Sympathy, arguably, is the most catchy album he's ever put out. Obviously, each album he puts out has two or three really catchy, catchy songs, but this With Sympathy is chock full of them. So, again, Al, if you ever watch this, give yourself a break, man. With Sympathy is really good. It just is. For what it is, a, a synth-pop, pop-tastic album, it gets five stars from me. I'm going to talk about these really quickly. If you're an, if you're a fan, well, if you're a fan of ministry, you have to have these anyway. But if you're a fan of early ministry in particular, you want to pick these up. These are newer. Um, I'm going to hold up a couple of compilations. These were released by Cleopatra, which is not the best label. They tend to really skimp on vinyl pressings, and they tend to be a little noisy, and their jackets are usually kind of crap but this this pressing's not bad but this is a really cool one it's called tracks rarities it has some live stuff from 1982 early early ministry it's amazing that this album's almost 40 years old but there you go um and it also has some demo versions and then some rec some songs that were never released in fact let me look here uh, yeah, side A is nothing but live stuff. Side B, oh, side B has Same Old Madness on it. Um, Same Old Madness is a great song, in my opinion, better than any song on With Sympathy. And there's a video for it. If you, if you look on YouTube, there's a video for Same Old Madness that Ministry put out. I guess that was supposed to be the first single, but then it just got scrapped and forgotten about. And when you listen to the lyrics, it doesn't quite fit with With Sympathy. With Sympathy is nothing but a bunch of lovey-dovey love songs, where Same Old Madness is lyrically more like we know Al now. It's politically tinged, 
it's you know um, it's just charged in that way. So it doesn't lyrically it doesn't fit in with the rest of with sympathy. So I suspect that maybe Al knew that, maybe planned on putting it on a B side somewhere, re-releasing it, and just shelved it and never put it out. But I'm glad it did come out. It's it's on this first song on side B, same old madness. Very very good song. And it also has like some revolting Cox songs. Those of you who don't know, revolting Cox is basically ministry. Uh, another side project of Al's. I can get into that some other time. But Al had a, a numerous side projects. Um, yeah, I should do a video about that. Some of his side project stuff is some of his best work, I think. But it has some Cox songs on here. Palehead is on here. PTP, One Thousand Homo DJs. Um, a good testament to early Al right here. Unreleased stuff, demos, and live stuff. This is his other release, 12 Inch Singles. This is a compilation. This got released back in the early 80s, but did not come out on vinyl. Cleopatra put this out on vinyl a few years ago. You'll see it comes in this little tote bag. Very cool packaging, I have to say. And then the record is housed in here comes on clear vinyl. That last one, Tracks Rarities, is on pink. I think it came in a few other colors. This one's on clear. And this is a compilation of, actually I forgot, it also has a, also has this photo, numbered photo. Mine's 626 out of a thousand. That's cool. Um, and here's the track listing, basically. It's got, it's got Halloween on it. I'm going to talk about Halloween in my next video when I talk about Twitch. Halloween is more of a Twitch song. I felt like that fit into that era a little bit more. Halloween was his first song he put out after his Arista, his Arista time period. Um, but this has Halloween, Nature of Love, All Day, Cold Life. The original only had these first seven songs on it. This expanded version has a, um, an extra record with all kinds of stuff. You've got Same Old Madness again. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. They say it's the demo version on the tracks, Rarities, but it's, it's the same version. So those of you who want to get both of these, if you think you're getting a different version of Same Old Madness, you're not. It's the same version. Um, Primantle's on here. I'm Falling. Nature of Outtakes, which is a remix of Nature of Love. I'm Falling. Alternative Mix, which is actually kind of cool. Overkill, He's Angry, and Move. Some unreleased songs on here. But anyway... If you're an early, if you're a fan of early ministry, you need to have this. And also, what's not what's not to like about this release? You get the numbered print and you get the bag. It's pretty cool. Of course, this came out like six or seven years ago. I'm sure this is worth like five hundred dollars now. I don't know. Records records are like Microsoft stock. They just go up and up and up. Anyway, check this out. But that's my video for With Sympathy from Ministry. And I'm going to continue to talk about Ministry because I love Al Jorgensen. I will always love Al Jorgensen. And those of you who were alive in the 80s, as I was, I was fascinated by this guy back then. And I, in fact, heard other records from Ministry before I heard With Sympathy. The, the first Ministry record I ever heard was Twitch, which I'll talk about after this. So to go back in time and hear With Sympathy, it's a little... It's a little weird because it's so different from what Al does now. But as a kid, it really meant a lot to me to understand that these bands can go a completely different direction and make it sound like they're not putting out any effort. I really respect bands who take the chance and artists who take the chance to do something different that's out of their wheelhouse. Because it's not easy and it is their career and making a choice might not seem like a big deal, but it is. You make that choice and you hope it works because you put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it and you want people to like it. And Al did that. Al made his with sympathy and then he went into doing what he does now and he's gone through a lot of changes and he's always maintained his integrity to some degree. Those of you who've seen the ministry documentary, maybe he doesn't have such integrity like when he's like when he's running around backstage with a diaper on and a Viking helmet and he's peeing on people. Yeah, maybe he doesn't always have the highest level of integrity, but 
Musically, Al Jorgensen is incomparable. I dare you to find one other, one other person in history that has the resume of Mr. Al Jorgensen. And this was the start of it, my friends. With sympathy, right here. Well, technically, this was the start of it. And a fine record this is as well. But album-wise, this is where it started. If you find yourself only li liking to listen to current ministry, heavy metal, guitars, wailing, no bass whatsoever ministry. By the way, why, why does this, is Al deaf? Have you guys heard ministry's latest albums? Like Americant and all that shit? There's no fucking bass. Where's the bass at? Dude. Put some bass in there. You need bass. I don't care how... I know that's a metal thing, but no. Dude. Bass. Anyway. I don't want to end it on that because we love Al. And we celebrate Al. And that's why we're here. With Sympathy. Tracks Rarities. 12-inch Singles. I Wanted to Tell Her. Work for Love. Cold Life. You can't lose.